Hi there. I'm going to show you how a game of Clash of Empires plays out. The game comes a uh, stuff full of components. So you, it's a tabletop game. It, it kind of in the spirit of the old um, Avalon Hills, Jutland, uh, and Bismarck. I think I have Jutland. I don't, I'm not sure about Bismarck actually, but you have cardboard counters which you play with on the tabletop or indeed a floor as I have done with Jutland. Um, it being a, not a seafaring game but a, a land-based game, they get you also provided with uh, cardboard cutouts. Um, uh, there's two wood sections, there's two uh, hill sections, there's all these road sections and um, some town and city sections. I think there's four or five of those as well. Um, so it's designed to be played on a six foot by four foot table. Uh, smaller than that would be a bit difficult because you have a fixed size for the forces. Here we have the Prussian core arrayed up. It was essentially two core on either side. I mean, uh, one core, two, two core, one core on either side. There is an expansion for Clash of Empires, which brings on two more cores, so you can have two core armies fighting each other. And there's five scenarios provided. In the expansion, you get a campaign game with scenarios involved in that. In the basic game, you have five scenarios, three of them historical. This is the first historical scenario called... Um, what's it called? I can't remember, but it's essentially... Um, you have uh, General Steinmetz and his corps coming, they're bunking out of the Bohemian Mountains. And um, uh, Bennett's has ordered, um, there's I think three or f three corps um, of Austrians in front. And uh, Bennett's uh, ordered two back, but Count Leopold decided to stay with his corps, seeing a golden opportunity to stop the foe. So um, you have here full. Prussian court. Now these units should all be laid out such as as this. I just, out of laziness, because I'm going to have to move them very quickly, I just bundled them all up. They're going to spend a couple of turns just moving, just to make it a bit easier to move them out. So imagine those splayed out as such. So you have two divisions and um, some core artillery and uh, cavalry on the Prussian side. Over here is the town of Skalitz, which is the, the objective. So the Prussians want it, the Austrians intended to keep them out of it. And they have a whole corps as well. Their corps are arranged slightly differently. So um, again, imagine these all spread out, but they have one, two, three, and four infantry brigades, and then a cavalry brigade. These are Jaeger um, battalions uh, or, or detachments. And you have some uh, core artillery and cavalry as well. So each brigade, except for the cavalry, have their own Jaeger detachment. For the Prussians, they, you only have two Jaeger detachments and they are for each division rather than each brigade. Now, um, start the game you you uh, write orders and then you will deliver um, impulses uh, to units which will activate their orders for them so you get given orders sheets which you photocopy and you write out your orders on them so um you can see there's also so here we have uh, the prussian side you have a uh, the 9th Division, the 10th Division, two brigades each, and their divisional artillery, cavalry, and Jaegers. You can write separate orders. Each brigade has six units. Each brigade can be given separate orders. Um, but uh, the, uh, and e indeed, each unit in each brigade could have separate orders. But the whole brigade, or or the assets will fulfil or not fulfil their orders as a unit. Um, and hopefully we'll explain that as we go along. Mainly, uh, the separate divisions are for permanent losses to each unit. So you do the same. Quite simple. It's essentially geographic objectives. So you're just aiming... The orders are 
will last one turn. So you're aiming to obtain your objective in one turn, which is four bounds. That's essentially four movement and combat phases. After one turn, if you obtain your objective or not, you will lose those impulses and then reset. However, there is a caveat to that. If you are contesting your objective, then you can retain your impulse and uh, have, uh, have that reinforced uh, in a subsequent turn. But just to keep it simple for now, I will show you how the impulses work. So having written um, the orders towards your objectives, uh, each core headquarters has three impulse chips. There's the Prussian ones, and here are the Austrian ones. And they will issue these down the line. So you can see the um, Prussian army has uh, two divisions, and each division has two brigades. Uh, here is the structure of the Austrian... I said army, didn't I, but I meant core. When I'm saying army now, if I ever say army at this, within this, I'm essentially meaning the core that we have on the table, the force. So the Corps has um, four infantry brigades and a cavalry brigade. So what's going to happen is something like this. The uh, Corps headquarters will send an impulse here. And by the way, the headquarters is represented on the map, so you need to be within a certain distance to do this. And an impulse there. As soon as the divisional headquarters um, receives an impulse, he generates three impulses of himself, of his own. And then he can send these on to his two brigades. Not to any others, only to those of his um, command structure. So uh, then this brigade will get an impulse, say. This brigade gets an impulse. And then instantly uh, the brigade headquarters, so you've got one there and one there, on receiving an impulse will generate impulses of their own and for the Prussians they will each generate five impulses. So now this brigade has five of its impulses self-generated plus one sent down from above. That's now six impulses and there being six units to that, six infantry units to that brigade, each of those will receive an impulse. Classically you, you will put it on the counter like that and uh, on the relevant map uh, description graphic and that now they can activate and fulfill their order so um, let's just show it properly how it would be uh, may not be the and of course you decide how these advance you uh, because of what my plan is uh, the, the brigade is advancing as a whole and one behind. Often, I guess, you, there would be three here and three here from one brigade. But, um, and in fact, that is sensible. So, for example, this brigade is advancing like that. And you put an impulse chit on each of them, like so. You get the message. So, uh, then... These ones have their same, okay, so they all go to there, six for those six fellows. And now there's two left in the 10th Division headquarters. What's he going to do with them? Well, A, he can keep them and they can be used to rally troops later on in the turn. Or B, he might send a separate order to the 10th Division Artillery or the 10th Division Jaegers or the 10th Division Cavalry. And you can see he couldn't do separate orders to all of them. Depends what you wrote. Um, if they haven't got orders, then there's no point in sending them an impulse. But if you otherwise, these uh, divisional assets have to remain within a, a short distance of the headquarters. Um, so they would not have their own operations. In this case, these Jaegers have been ordered to go into those woods. So they're going to receive an impulse. And at the moment they're in column formation, so I, I put chip like that, the impulse chip facing that way instead of that way, to show that is their direction of march. Now there's one impulse chip left. What do we do with that? Well, um, 
the we also want the this artillery to move forward but we do have some other options if we don't spend a chip on one of these or another unit what you can do is double up so say i think these ones are going to come in some fighting this turn and need a, a bit of an extra boost i'll give them a second impulse chip then we would replace those two with a two impulse chip like that and then he will be under two impulses that is going to give a bit of a bonus in combat any fighting he gets into but i'm not doing that at the moment so these two go to there so the cavalry are going to hang out with the divisional headquarters and these two are going off somewhat of their own missions and so similarly that's going to happen down here and um so we have one to activate all those the five there then we have two left and it's a very similar story here. So the Jaegers, they've also been told to go to the woods. The intention is to take them. Wherever you go to, you, you, you can fight to keep them. And the artillery, likewise, have been given special mission too. Um, okay, so everybody has been activated except the divisional assets. So the division, the, sorry, the core assets, that's... Um, core artillery and core cavalry. So they will hang out with the core headquarters unless given a separate order and an impulse chip to activate them, which is the case here. Otherwise, note that the, um, there was a, a an impulse chip left over. Again, this could have been sent down to one of the divisions. It, it wouldn't generate a whole other set of three, but that division commander might then send it on, say, to give an extra impulse, perhaps, to those Jaegers. So potentially one of the Jaeger units could end up with three, which is the maximum number of impulse chits one can have at any one time. But anyway, that, so that's the Prussians activated. Now, the Austrians, you, you see, have a bit of a difficult problem not having the divisional structure. And, and it's, their core is still only generating three impulse chits they can only activate three out of their five um, brigades at once you write orders for all of them but the ones that don't have an impulse chip will not be able to um, activate their orders and what i'm going to do is i'm going to send one to slom's cavalry one to um hurtweg's brigade and one to Jonak's brigade. So that means these two I'm going to these stacks I'll just leave back there. Um, Hurtweg's brigade uh, the brigade commander generates six um, impulses and then you have one there which gives us seven and that is just enough to activate one for the Jaegers and then six for each of the battalions in that brigade. So those six will all go on there. So um, that's all completely activated to carry out its orders. Now we also are sending seven to um, Jonak's um, brigade there. But interestingly, I'm not going to activate them. So what we then do, uh, the, uh, the Jaegers, yes, they will be activated. Guess what? They're going to the words. Because those, those words are obviously hotly con going to be an important point. Um, it could interdict anyone moving this way. And in other g games of this, you know, I've, I've had Prussians moving up around the top. So it would be very handy to hold the words. Jaegers can move through them at normal movement and uh, they don't have any trouble, any sort of disruption for fighting them. The other troops not so, so you're going to want your Jaegers in there. But the rest of Jonak's brigade I'm not going to activate yet. So they're, as indicated in the orders, they're going to be held back. And so when they, so they can be held back for one, two, maybe three or even, uh, yeah, three bounds. That w when the time comes, if it's written their orders, I can flip and then they will activate and fulfil their orders. Otherwise, in an emergency, you could send the general from the core headquarter to um, flip them over to activate them. 
Now that just leaves us with the Slons Brigade, the Cavalry Brigade. So these are being activated. So just like the others, we get um, six plus one is seven. That means, um, but there's only three units. Oops, a daisy. In slums. What this means is that these units, uh, one of them is going to immediately get three impulses, and the others will get two each. Sorry, two will get th three. Yes, I have that right. Um, two will get two, and one will get three. So these are going to be highly motivated um, right from the get-go. They're going to need to be because cavalry are quite fragile. You do not want to charge a standing unit in line as cavalry. If you hit them in the flank or the rear, great. So they're going to be highly motivated. They will need that, but they're also going to be held back for the time being. Lastly, just to note, the Austrian divisional artillery don't need any, they're completely, uh, sorry, core artillery are completely independent. They don't need any um, impulse chips to activate them, so they can operate as they like. And now we move on to the um, the movement. So movement happens simply. You have um, a, a stick uh, showing Jaegers and columns can move all the way up to there, y units in line up to there. If you start in a hill or a village, you start moving from there to there, say. If you start in a wood, you start moving from there to there. Unless you're Jaegers and you just always go that far. Cavalry and artillery get a different stick. And um, cavalry actually move twice that length. So uh, you both move at the same time, which means that when you're coming into close contact, you're going to um, have to sort of, you know, sort of move half, in half portions. So we simply go like this. Um, the Jaegers charging up here, and this these are marching in column, in order to move out here. Let me put them out sensibly like that. And I didn't speak about the um, each uh, Austrian brigade also has one attached uh, artillery. So. That's kind of like battalion artillery. You can put them on any one battalion and they will effectively support them. They can also move completely independently without any orders. Okay, so they move out. And I'm actually going to move everyone twice because nothing's going to happen for um, the first two bands because if we check, we have other range sticks um, the Austrians, their um, Lorenz rifle and their, their artillery have a greater range than the Prussian needle guns and artillery. Um, and we have different ratings for units as well. For instance, the Austrian cavalry start out a lot stronger than uh, the uh, Prussian ones, but the Prussian line unit is stronger than the Austrian line unit, but the Austrians tend to move into combat in combat column. But anyway, what I was saying is this artillery, which I'm going to indicate with a handy little device here, is unlimbered. Otherwise, it's in line. You can see it's unlimbered, but sometimes a unit will be moving perpendicular to the rest. You're not sure, is it in line or is it unlimbered? These unlimbered artillery can fire four of these range sticks. The Prussians can only fire three of their range sticks, so you can see it's going to determine a lot of tactics already, which tells us the other thing to note in this scenario is that although we have two sets of words, so you've got the, the objective there, oh, oh, and that's an objective too, so the Prussians um, have to take either or, or indeed both if they can, but either or of the hill or the town. I've got these here to, to remind me, although it's summer and they're, they're in winter wear, that um, woods is unpassable. These ones can be moved through, even to Jaegers. As is, this is represents a, a mountainous area behind which is unpassable to anyone except Jaegers. No Jaegers, no no one here. But anyway, um, so the Austrian guns can fire all the way up to here. 
And the Prussian guns, from where they are, if they were unlimbered, could fire one, two, three, up to there. So you can see they're going to have to get close before they can come into action. So maybe I should just move one for everyone because these fellows are going to come in for some fire, aren't they? Which I have to admit I hadn't properly accounted for in, when I was planning this out. Now, if a unit is at um, accurate range, so for example, accurate range for the artillery is two of those divisions, um, you have to fire at the nearest unit. Beyond that, in, in effective range, you can choose. So for example, the firing artillery would be able to choose which one of those units to fire upon. Not good. Um, so I'll just move up one, two, three. You can see why I put them in stacks because this can take a while. Um, so I'll move up the brigades, the headquarters move. Actually, there's nothing in the, in the, the general movement. The generals is mentioned in the rules, but not the headquarters. So I just move them a cavalry distance at will. Okay, now these Jaegers are moving up, and the infantry following close behind. Headquarters, fortunately. Um, cannot be bombarded, but they could be overrun by enemy troops. I'm going to keep the cavalry well back. I don't want them fired on at this point by the artillery. So, so they've moved that far up, and I'll just check the range again. One, two, three, four. Okay, so the artillery are just out of range, the Jaegers are just in range, so they're going to be the only target. Now that is unfortunate. Um, and you check from the furthest um, part of your piece on the nearest part of who you are firing to. So yes, both guns can bring to bear on him. Now the way this works is, because it's bombardment, because that then those guns are not actually being advanced on, you just take um, the artillery bombardment factor. Now we're at effective, rather accurate range is 12. Um, double that, because there's two of them, is 24. And then we check a Jaeger battalion. Now, uh, an a Prussian, the Austrians, they have different um, races, they call them, because at this point the nation states don't exist as such, so we can't call these different nations. But anyway, different races within the Austrian Empire. Um, but the, we look at the Prussians, their Jaegers are five, you see the Austrians are eight. And the Austrian artillery is stronger for the basic fighting power, their cavalry are stronger. But the Prussians have the bonus in the infantry. But anyway, so we're looking at the Prussian Jaegers are worth five. Then we check various other things. Um, first of all, we go to the, the unit power factor. So is your unit advancing? Yes, they are. And they are Prussian or German, so they get plus two. So that was five plus two is seven. Do they outnumber the enemies? No, that doesn't count for bombardment. What is the aggression of your unit? How many impulse counters has your unit? Now remember I said that he could perhaps have had two, possibly even three. Well, he's only got one. For every one you add two. So we're on five, six, seven, eight, nine. How many friendly units supporting? So those are friendly units. Any units within this critical zone on the range stick, which is also a critical range hand-to-hand -hand combat so um, okay he's got them and them they're not quite in it now I could have been careful to move them so 
Oh, that's the range. Yeah, not quite. So one, two, three, four for each of those supporting. So where were we? We're on five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Then we don't have any other thing from there. Now terrain which, that we're not moving through particular terrain, you know, like hills, over water, woods, etc. So the cohesion does not go down from that. There's no disorder from combat yet. And then we would go to the firepower factor if we were within range. So if if the, they could fire upon them, they could add firepower factor. Well, in fact, they can't anyway because they're moving in column formation. So we stop where we were. And um, you use, you, or you can use, sometimes I just write it down, a handy device given with the game of the Total Fighting Power Games Tally Stick. So we started with um, five... Two for advancing, two for his impulse chip, four for f friendly support units. So we're on a grand total of 13. So we have 13 against 12 twice. So the 12s are doubled to 24. So we have 24 against 13. And then because it's two against one, we divide by two. So they go down to 12. And his 13, you drop fractions goes down to six so it's 12 against six and we see who has the ascendancy so the austrians obviously have ascendancy of six points over the prussian and we look down and see what happens okay so the weaker unit goes into decisive disorder and we check what they have to do they have to retire they don't have to retreat at this point or rout and they don't, but they don't just halt, so they have to retire. So we get a handy little chit, and it's we get one for each of those relevant um, things. This one says it's retire in decisive disorder. So we place that on top of his impulse counter, and you can see if he'd had to retreat he would have removed the impulse counter but there's more there's a permanent loss of minus one to the weaker unit and up in this case being the Prussian 10th division Jaeger battalion so we go here and we put a minus one so every scoring up of this now of his total fighting power which is what we get when we add all those up will be on minus one and finally there's a combat bonus to the stronger unit of plus two so again we get another handy counter from here plus two and we place that on these and so for the next band they're going to have a plus two and this very nicely represents a lot of things because you find the unit gaining ascendancy the next round it's going to have sort of momentum and enthusiasm and impulse can get a better hit back but you can find that so that momentum carries you forward or you know if you have a counter-attack it helps you withstand that but it's not necessarily going to continue and if if say this unit had another unit coming to aid it then they could be depleting that but it does it's very interesting how this game is about essentially about the ascendancy who's gaining ascendancy over whom and it's decided through um your maneuver and your tactics no there's no dice involved at all now, if we had been going the other way, um, we would have had these results, except instead of a minus one permanent loss to the artillery, they would have had a minus three. Um, so that is the result of the first um, bound. So we, we will take off the first bound. That's the impulse phase bound. Three orders, three impulses used as orders. And we will go to the second band. So each band um, operates like that. In uh, You have impulses if it's the first band of the turn. Then you have movement. Then you have combat. And then you perform the combat results, which I'd almost forgotten to do. Remember, this fellow had to retire. So he will move backwards facing the enemy. And he would move backwards a full um, movement. Now, there's... The rules describe what happens if you retreat or rout through a friendly unit, but not for retiring. So reading between the lines and taking the implication that they will only retire back as far as the next friendliest unit. 
So I, I will say that is us done for the first band of the first turn. So let's uh, now, without further ado, we can move straight on to the second band because there's no borders written at this point. On the third band, you get a chance to s to send out an emergency order, and um, that can be very useful. Obviously, as things are starting to pan out, and you can see you're going to have to change um, your plans. Or you might send out an emergency impulse just reiterating the last order, which then means that everyone who receives an impulse from that, they can add it to the impulse they already have. And you can see a handy combat bonus could build up through that. Um, so they're moving on ahead. These ones are still um, delaying because essentially the idea is for Jonax to move out um, as a, a, a like a, a counter-attacking force. These ones are poised here um, to threaten the flank. Quite happy to see that. The... Yes, you didn't see that. So um, the Hurtwerk has moved forward. These ones are going to be poised here as, as a flanking force. They're quite happy to see the Prussians are not moving it around this way yet. So um, they could still change direction. Um, Jonat's brigade is not moving out yet, and uh, neither are Slons. Jonat's are designed as a counter-attacking force. They're just going to go straight into the attack. Previous games I've had um, a brigade defending in line and, and mixed line and counter-attack column um, in there. And it's been more or less successful depending on what the Prussians have, have done. So... Um, Yes, let's just move the Prussians straight forward. One, two, three, the division's going ahead, and rest all following along. And now the artillery were tasked to move forwards two bands and then unlimber. So um, they will not be able to fire this turn, so I, I will leave my little marker on top because they have moved. Other units can move and fire, but not artillery. And obviously cavalry don't fire. Well, maybe not obviously, but that is so. Okay. You can see the Prussians have elected to move all of their guns up ready to start engaging the enemy and do some softening up. Now the fellow who had to retire, because he has this chip on his impulse, he cannot activate this, he cannot go on with his orders this round. So we put it there to show, okay, we're going to take it off at the end of the bound. And now this fellow has to move around him. He can simply um, flip 180 degrees, move like this. He won't have such far movement but he will be able to get around him. I don't actually want to move him up at this point. Um, so I will leave him there. The rest of the Prussians moving ahead a pace. And I haven't checked it out, which I probably should, but they're hoping that um, the up there and not going to be within the firing line. But note, this fellow here, I'm going to say those brigades are, let's just say for the sake of argument, that those brigades are stacked crazily like that behind. If this fellow's fired on, he's got six units behind and one there, they will all be adding plus two, so he's not going to be retiring under that uh, same cannon fire because he's got so much support behind him. Probably not historically accurate, maybe you'd have two or three brigades in March columns straight behind them. But anyway, at this point the Prussians should really historically be moving into line. That is their attack formation, they wouldn't be marching up like this. So anyway, f that's... Um, End of movement for the second bout, so now we go to combat. So we have these guns can fire. Uh, that's the Austrian ones back there. And we know they're in effective range. And now they have one target each. 
Um, I think strictly speaking I could concentrate two on one and if we have a quick look how that's going to work this artillery each has starts out on four and is advancing five six they have an interval say eight each so if one fires on each, they will be halted in indecisive disorder. So they'll just be halted. Uh, but they have some bonus. So I think that the option is halting two of them, or perhaps sending one right back in disorder, and we're going to go for that. So both of them are going to fire on the middle. So we know that those <coughs> excuse me, were on 12, but they've each got a plus two. So that, that's going to bring it to around 14. Now this artillery was on 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Which is only a plus 2, so uh, in fact, ah, but then he's halved because there's 2 onto 1. So that's 6, so 6 against 14 is ascendancy. <coughs> oh, excuse me, I got something particularly in my throat. A six against 14 is ascendancy of eight. So now we have decisive disorder, retreat, remove impulse counter. They are going to keep their plus two, and we have three hits on that artillery unit. And that is the core artillery, which are the strongest ones in these two whole cores. So that's a bit of a blow. And... Um, and you have retreat in decisive disorder. So now notice, not just retire, so they lose their impulse chit and um, put the counter on. Then what we would do is we go and check other combats, which we do not have at this point. And then we go to the end for the fight results. Well, I will show that these are unlimbered now. This fellow down here has spent a whole bound stopped because of that so that can come off and now he has to retreat he will turn around and move a full distance back now he's going to have to I mean, I'll just do a little really there say so he was more or less unlimbered so I'm moving him just a limber distance back uh, moving from limbering okay and that is the end of the second bound so then we move on to the third bound, and at this point, as I said earlier, you could add an emergency, or as many emergency orders as you like, up to the three of maximum. But the point is, is they will be taken from your um, impulse chits at the next beginning of the next turn. So if you, whatever you spend now in emergency is going to be deducted from your operations a bit operational ability of the next turn. So, um, you see there's, and you don't want to spend a lot of impulse checks because if you're not contesting, they're going to be lost at the end of a turn. Because either you obtain your objective, in which case you lose your impulse checks and you defend in place, or you will not have gained your objective, in which case you also lose your impulse checks and await, await new orders. So um, I'm not going to show any emergency orders at this point. Uh, so we go on to the third bound. So these Jaegers are moving on completely undeterred. And this column, these columns just going straight up behind and they're definitely going to move out into line in a minute. Each turn represents an hour, so we can surmise each bound is 15 minutes. Okay, now, um, okay, so they, they've moved up. The artillery here can't do anything, but these Jaegers that were, had retired before are back in action. Now they can change formation almost at will. So, but I'm going to move them through that gap there. 
Um, better move up the 9th Division Cavalry behind. So the way the movement works, the, the 9th Division headquarters up there, so the cavalry hasn't got any separate orders. It has to remain within a infantry movement stick of its headquarters. The way you move a unit is you will note, say, that corner, then if you were wheeling it, then you say, OK, so that corner moved from there up to there. So we've got the rest of that movement left. And then the same again, because it's the cavalry, but there's going to be a little bit knocked off if they move into the hill. OK, so they're moving up there. Move all their chits with them. Oh, the headquarters actually there. Okay, corpse cavalry coming up there, and then this lot will have to move up to there. They should probably be moving into line at this point. So yes, I will move them back. The thing is, one of them can go up into line, you just simply will turn it like that on its middle point or to either side. And that one will go to line there, and then this one will go to line like that. And then the ones moving up behind will have to go a bit slower than they could. So that is the Prussians, and then for the Austrians, they are going to gain the um, woods first. These ones don't want to move into the woods. Sorry. So we've got the Prussians there. That the Jaegers are gaining the woods. These ones do not want to move into the woods. It's not going to be good for them. They also don't want to move out here into direct line of fire of this artillery. So um, they're going to be waiting there to disrupt an infantry attack. So what I'm going to have is, I'm going to say these back ones are back face. So that's 180 degrees, which means they will then be moving off. From here, oops, hang on. So these ones are going to have to wheel. No, they don't need to do 180 degrees. They're just going to wheel. Uh, okay. Okay, so they essentially get about that much. Okay. And then these ones will do 180 degrees and then march that way and then turn back another 180 degrees. Oh no, sorry. I wanted to put them in line. Yes. So if I put them in line it's going to be lying like that. Yeah, so yeah, it's a bit confusing me how these would realistically move. I'll tell you can more or less just go like that. I think I'll just m move them off again as though they were wheeling. So they can go in there, which more or less like that. So they're, as they're moving around it could look like they're trying to flank Prussians but I think actually they're just going to be hiding behind the um, woods. Okay so that is that for the third band's movement. But we now have artillery fire. Now this is interesting, so it's going to be battery on battery at this point. 
more than likely. Oh, I'd forgotten to be sending out Jonak's brigade. So let me just. Oh, okay. I hadn't actually ordered them. Okay, I'll say that was that was an unfortunate error. Uh, yeah, no, they better not go in the woods alone because um. That would separate them from their main. That could can create a problem. Okay, so we have the artillery on artillery now. These both guns are the same, have the same firepower factor, which is all you use at this point in bombardment. Um, so we're going to have one against each. Just check that the Prussians are actually within range. Which is good point one. They only have three. Ah, so no, the Prussians are not even within range. So why did they unlimber there? Well, the, originally the plan was they thought that the, the Austrians might be moving up infantry to de defend forward and the guns weren't designed to dissuade them. Perhaps they did that, I don't know. But what the upshot of it is, is that they are going to be fired on indiscriminately by the Austrians, which is rather disastrous. Because the Austrians are on a flat 12 plus 2 is 14. And it, so it would be the same result as last time. Uh, no, but it's one each, so um, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, let's move up. Let's move up the um, cavalry to give them enough support because of that. Uh, I can't think of everything on, on camera, you know. <laughs> So where are we? Four, five, six for advancing, seven, eight for impulse, nine, ten for supporting units. So he's on ten versus fourteen, which is a sentence of plus four over him. So he's going into indecisive disorder, which is, and just a halt in indecisive disorder. So that's going to be a cohesion hit on him. So he doesn't lose an impulse chip, but he will get a minus if he's fired on next turn. And this fellow is um, is on more because he's got another fellow near him, so 12 versus 14, so it's plus 2 against him. No, in fact, it's the same. And they each get two hits on their minus 2 to their strength. So... Um, Deary me, I'm not a good plan I set out for the Prussians. They're getting pounded up from a distance by the Austrians without doing anything. We're always straight on. So there's no movement from there, so we don't need to, to adjust anything for combat results. Um, but one of these, they, they only have these bonuses for one bound, and only one of them gets a bonus this bound one that fired up there for the next band, the other one's down, so it'll be even Stevens between these two. Oh no, but he's also got indecisive disorder. Ah, okay, so they still have some ascendancy over them. You see how I really like the way this game models that ascendancy. Um, although these guys are gaining it and sort of support and stuff, because they've got lo losing, lost something in disruption, that disruption could increase, and it, it increases incrementally, not, not in huge leaps and bounds, which um, seems to me, it gives a really good feeling of a way of modelling the warfare in this period. Speaking of leaps and bounds, I'm moving on to the last bound of this turn. So, um, Prussians over here have, uh, someone's going to have to move across that open ground in front of all that artillery. It is interesting because before the, the Austrians have had people up here so there's been someone to fight but now there's this huge open space and the only way you're going to be able to withstand them is by withstanding a, a flat 12. Uh, one of these infantry battalions would be a an 8. 9, 10 with its impulse, and then with a supporter would be a 12, so that would be a 0. Now, 
but you can see where it would have been wise perhaps to spend an emergency impulse to fortify these fellows for moving across the open ground which they are going to have to do. Someone's got to take the hits. So, um, and unfortunately, I, I want to relimber these and move them forward, but now they've got a halt ID on them. So they're spending their turn halted. It, in past battles, I sent a ca a ca on occasion, I sent cavalry forwards purely to draw the fire of the art artillery so that other units can come up under them. Because the cavalry are great as shock troops against um, a weak enemy, but uh, otherwise they don't come into the action till a lot later generally. Okay, so we have a meeting of Jaegers in the wood there, and that's obviously going to go nicely for Prussians because they're sending in. And they can just... Uh, should they go in in column? Historically, they wouldn't have done that. They would have been in line. So in fact, I'm going to delay their Jaeger. And then this fellow is here. So I think they just come into combat. And then I'll send these fellows off up the hill and the cavalry moving it over the hill too. I'm going to try and do a fancy manoeuvre with this cavalry to get him round the artillery. Just so he can support those Jaegers. Okay, and on the Prussian end, what are we going to do with these fellows? Because now it looks like the Prussians are, on the Austrian end rather, the Prussians are moving around the hill. But their orders were to obtain this area here, and they've done it. So at the end of the turn, they'll be going to defence. Um, they, can, they can charge out um, in, uh, to fight off uh, potential marauders, but they won't be doing much else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse these columns so they will be ready um, to attack there and the attack so there's a split, there's half of these are Germans, half are Italians. It's quite just the national characteristics differ slightly. The Germans and the Prussians are generally quite steady. The Italians and the Slavs are uh, not as steady. And the Magyars get a whopping plus four bonus when advancing. So it actually doubles their basic um, fighting power. That's the Magyars here. So they're kind of shock troops. But then they get significant... No, they get a normal... They're just normal retiring. Yes, okay. So um, that is it. So um, let me go to. Uh, we've done the movement, and then um, let me just check. You have a handy thing telling you what happens on each band: band one, band two, band three, with the emergency impulse phase, and then band four. 
So you move units, fight, then you check objectives, and then that's when you'll check who's losing orders or not, and then do the fight results. So we better do the fight. So the fight here um, between the Jaegers works out like this. They're on a basic eight. They're on a basic five. They both have one impulse chip each. They're both advancing, but this fellow has support. So that's going to bring his five up to seven against eight. So he's going to have one ascendancy, and they, they both don't get any subtraction for moving through the woods and so forth, being Jaegers. So uh, for essentially, with just plus one ascendancy, all that means is that this fellow goes into halt in order. Um, so he won't lose anything on cohesion, but because he's halted, he won't get an advancing penalty. Mind you, this fellow's not advancing there, is he? Um, okay, because they're in contact. So, uh, but they are going to be firing at each other um, rather than going to shock and. That's where the all-important firepower factor comes in. Now, um, you have to total the factors of your unit so far, and then you can see there's a difference, depending on the range, there's also a difference between the Austrians and the Prussian forces. So there the Austrians can fire further, their fire is not as effective. So let's go back. The Prussian, uh, the Austrian is on 8, plus 2 for advancing, plus 2 for impulse is 12. Now if he'd been on one more, he'd have gone there, which was a bit better, but he's going to be 12 plus 4 is 16, versus the Prussian is on 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. He's in the same column, but he gets a plus 7 instead of a plus 4. So he's on 18 versus 16, which is plus 2, so in actual fact, that result goes slightly different way. There's no, instead of being halted in order, the Austrian is halted in disorder, which means he's going to have um, indecisive disorder. So he's going to have this deduction from him next term if uh, anybody fights him, which they probably are going to be. So that is the uh, fighting portion. Now we go to objective assessment. So. Um, these fellows have obtained their objective, so they're going to lose their impulses. Okay, and these fellows haven't obtained their objectives, so they are null and voided. Okay. So that's everything worked out, and oh, and I forgot to do the firing, the last firing, let's just quickly do that. Um, so I think we're going to have this, so that's 12, 13 on those Jaegers, which are on 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 2, so that's nothing. But then on, these on 12 versus these fellows here on 4, 5, 6. Seven, eight, nine, and then indecisive disorder for artillery is minus three, so they're on six. So twelve on six, so plus six, decisive disorder minus three, they are getting beaten badly. They're having to retire and they're losing three. Um, Three more hits. But they could have fired on one of those. Okay, but I think with this fellow firing on him, that's not going to, to work. So he's minus three more hits on the 10th Division Artillery. So he's on minus five at this point, which is a, a big drop. Um, okay. 
So objective assessment, so the artillery have obtained their objectives, which was to get where they were, even though it didn't work out too well. Uh, okay, can we move the chips on those fellows? Everyone else obtained their objectives. And these fellows, the Jaegers are supposed to be in the woods, so they're contesting their objective. So in fact, both of those sides, Jaegers can retain their impulse, but the other fellows have all got to where they wanted to be, so they will lose their objective chips. I, I say objective, I meant impulses. I hope you knew what I meant. So they now will need new orders, which is going to happen at the beginning of band one of the new... I've written some notes myself, just to help remind me. I don't actually need those notes now because I've played it a few times. It's quite simple to remember everything. Of turn two. So that is how it fights out. Now, um, I should probably just do one video uh, maybe one or two later on just to show you how firing and shot combat will work with more a bit more in, involved rather than just a very basic initial skirmish like there um but i think this gives you some idea if you sort of extrapolate it out how it's going to work out you have units moving up knocking other units back um especially if they are supported themselves. If both sides are supported, you can end up in a sort of to and fro with slight adjustments with no one gaining much ascendancy over each other for a long time. If you imagine that this fellow was supported too. And uh, so you might gain ascendancy by some more units coming up behind and adding more support. So things are fed in like that. And... Uh, like I say, I like the ebb and flow of combat that it provides. So orders have been written and impulses have been doled out for both sides at the beginning of the second term. Each side is a bit more canny now in how it is uh, um, doling out its impulses. You can see um, the Austrians here, and it, all the Prussian forces here as well. You can just about see all the Austrians. Essentially, the Austrians have um, reactivated Hertwig, same orders to hold this area here. The Wahlstadt and Brigade um, have been ordered into Hill Y, so that they will take up position in that, and then they're essentially going to stay there for the battle, is the hope. And then um, Jonat's brigade has been activated, but only the Jaegers are going, they're, they've been sent into the woods. And half of um, his battalions, that's three of them, have been given six, the six remaining impulses. So they're going to have two each, because they're going to be moving up to hold a position about parallel with the edge of the woods there. Um, coincidentally, that is also the instructions that the Prussians have given um, to the 19th Brigade, which you see is partially deployed in line here. And um, it's three, three of its um, battalions have not been given impulses at all. And extra impulses were set from Corps headquarters also to here, which means that these front two have three impulses each. This one has one. They're going to be moving up to stop about there. Uh, these will be moving up uh, I was good. These were meant. Uh, I cannot move them up because they have. They haven't got any activation. They were going to move up in support. Well, we have to see how they do with that because also, some two impulses were spent for the um the tenth division's Jaegers to move into the woods to support the ninth division. The Jaegers there have been given extra impulses, and the whole of the ninth division have um the rest of them have got one impulse each, except for the cavalry that will just hang out with the headquarters. And um, that has, uh, one brigade has been tasked to the road up the north here, and the other brigade has been tasked um, to the road here. So um, there's obviously going to be a clash around there, and the hope is now, because the uh, Austrian artillery are covering this area so beautifully, they're going to try and move around, which I had not wanted to do this game, but I'm going to have to, as the Prussian. Um, 
So we will move out and then I will um, come back in a bit. Perhaps as expected, um, the Jaeger moving up here up offered some support to um, this Jaeger which has sent these back in complete disorder. So they actually have to retreat a, a, a length up to there. Um, but this they, this was an accurate range of these two artillery, so they have to an accurate range. You have to fire on the nearest unit, so they couldn't direct theirs. Did cover the the, the artillery there, but basically that one's just been completely shredded in his routing. Um, the Jonat Brigade, or at least the units that are moving out, are moving out. Being careful not to block the fire at the moment. Uh, this one should be going to the woods and these are moving out here. So in the uh, second band, the results of the second band have come in and um, okay, these ones are lying idle. These ones have moved up and they're fortunate because um, Jonak's forces have to move the Jaegers have to move to the um, the woods, that's their order, so they're going to have to block the line of sight of the artillery at some point. These fellows, they're sort of bunching close, they put one in line here to an attack column behind. As a, let's put them a bit spaced out so that if this one routes, he can route through them. As indeed happened up here, you see Hurtway's got a very difficult problem because he's got people coming in at... at two angles from him and uh, potentially uh, in his rear so he left one battalion in line here put one battalion in line here and then um, uh, there's this one supporting another in line there another in line there and another in column supporting there the one in line here has exchanged shots with the advancing a Prussian battalion there and that's come out with a lot of support so this one ends up routing it routes through its friends there um, uh, to its headquarters which can rally it next turn which is what happened here um, with the uh, Jaegers which have blocked up some of the maneuvers there um, uh, from when they routed back and were stopped to be rallied so um, the Jaegers here has advanced far ahead of its supports because they slow down a lot in the woods, especially in line formation. Um, and here you can see how, how I've arranged it. Probably completely ahistorical, but it might be simulating something, perhaps more likely lines. But the trouble with this is if I just had stacks of lines and he routed, he would... I think he's still going to have to. If he routes, he's going to route straight through those fellows to his headquarters and they will all um, suffer from that. Which reminds me, I forgot to check for the fellow unit reactions charts for that route and also for this route, which might have meant some halting around here. So I'm going to ignore that. That's two, one route on each side. I've, I've forgotten. I'll ignore that, but I must remember because we could, you know, you could have a domino effect. Probably what realistically would happen is that these guys would be halted. So they would be stuck, they wouldn't be able to move. These guys are going to move on up, and uh, similarly here, I mean, these ones are on 8, 9, 10, 16, that would still have halted, no disruption, but um, yeah, he wouldn't have moved out. So anyway, c'est la vie, we will continue with the third band. You can see... Uh, and Wallstatten is occupying the hill nicely. Then he sent his Jaegers out in advance there. And the results of the second band have come in. And um, okay, these ones are lying idle. These ones have moved up and they're fortunate because um, Jonak's forces have to move. The Jaegers have to move to the... Um, woods that's their order so they're going to have to block the line of sight of the artillery at some point these fellows they're sort of bunching close they put one in line here 
to an attack column behind as a let's put them a bit spaced out so that if this one routes he can route through them as indeed happened up here you see Hertwig's got a very difficult problem because he's got people coming in at, at two angles from him and uh, potentially uh, in his rear so he left one battalion in line here put one battalion in line here and then um, uh, there's this one supporting another in line there another in line there and another in column supporting there the one in line here has exchanged shots with the advancing uh, Prussian battalion there and that's come out with a lot of support so this one ends up routing it routes through its friends there um, uh, to its headquarters which can rally it next turn which is what happened here um, with the uh, Jaegers which have blocked up some of the manoeuvres there um, uh, from when they routed back and were stopped to be rallied so um, the Jaegers here has advanced far ahead of its supports because they slow down a lot in the woods, especially in line formation. Um, and here you can see how, how I've arranged it, probably completely ahistorical, but it might be simulating something perhaps more likely lines. But the trouble with this is if I just had stacks of lines and he routed, he would, I think he's still going to have to. If he routes, he's going to route straight through those fellows to his headquarters and they will all um, suffer from that. Which reminds me, I forgot to check for the fellow unit reactions charts for that route and also for this route, which might have meant some halting around here. So I'm going to ignore that. That's two, one route on each side. I've, I've forgotten. I'll ignore that, but I must remember because we could, you know, you could have a domino effect. Probably what realistically would happen is that these guys would be halted. So they would be stuck, they wouldn't be able to move. These guys are going to move on up and uh, similarly here and these ones are on 8, 9, 10, 16. That would still have halted, no disruption, but um, yeah, he wouldn't have moved out. So anyway, c'est la vie, we will continue with the third bound. You can see... Uh, and Wallstatten is occupying the hill nicely. Then he sent his Jaegers out in advance there. So here in the third uh, band, the Prussian, or the second turn, the Prussian lines are um, falling apart a bit around here. Um, big spaces forming up. And um, the Prussian, they have an ability to, if they're moving column, they can turn straight to one side or the other and form line immediately no cost in movement, it just happens on the spot. So um, three of the um, battalions did that here, one to support this, these two coming up along here. Hurt, um, uh, the Jaegers here have opted that they've halted in the woods uh, to exchange fire here. Hurtweg is answering um, the, uh, uh, apparently a whole division coming in down uh, upon him. Um, this fellow fell back, so he's got a nice line here. Hurtwick himself is rallying um, the battalion there. He sent two straight into the attack, and this one's really just a speed bump. You can see um, there's uh, half of the Prussian 9th Division going off up over that, in that direction towards the road there. Um, the Jaegers had to move up. They're supposed to be heading for the woods. They can see that it's going to be hotly contested. So there's going to be a firefight here. And here, um, Jonax, Brave, Slavs um, have moved up. This one's advancing under fire, firing back. And these two came out from behind, rushing into the attack. So that's going to be a three to one attack. But um, these guys have no firepower there. They won't be able to add much to this fellow, but it'll be interesting to see how that pans out. I wouldn't be surprised if it sends this um, one back at retiring. So I'll move on to the um, combat phase. So the result of these combats are um, these fellows were halted, um, although in, in order, so, so no loss of that, and now he's lost his... Um, 
plus three bonus that's so he sort of spent his momentum that round with the charge upon him. Um, I forgot to do something there, I should check that one out. Um, okay, this fellow's rallied. Um, these ones, quite handily, sent this fellow back retiring with a loss of uh, one or two. So, although he gains a bonus of plus five as Jaegers took the cover of the woods, um, it was essentially the help of the uh, brigade artillery that um, sent them back. And uh, here, this one's shooting upon here, this one was already weakened from the right before you get minus four to your strength from that. Routed him again, he'd just been rallied. He's routed back once again to his headquarters. And over here, um, despite heavy shooting from the Prussians, they've been halted in some disorder at fire and two Austrian attack columns coming bearing down upon them of that. So we'll swiftly move on to the third bound of the second turn. So the results of that are Prussian route here, moving through his unit there, which halts in disorder, indecisive disorder they call it. Um, not decisive disorder and not complete disorder. Um, similar here is a uh, these two and the artillery here, he was blocked against the Jaegers halted in the woods. They've retreated in complete disorder, lost a couple of points, put these two behind it in disorder. Then the Jaeger, if you remember, that was here, that had, was, had actually rallied twice, routed once, was fired on, still in accurate range, and essentially vaporizes because he had so many losses, um, when you added up all his factors, because he's not able to do any return fire, he couldn't sort of boost himself from that. His factors were less than zero, his total fighting power was less than zero, so he just removed off the board. And I've forgotten to mention before, that is what had happened to the other, the Austrian Jaeger that was in, in the woods there previously. So, um, some fallbacks here. <coughs> but... Uh, Damn, again, I've forgotten to work out the matchups here. So I'll just quickly do that. So this one's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, plus 12. That's 24 for the Prussians. And then the uh, Italians are on 4. They're halted in order. So that's 4 each. 1, 2, 3, 4... And then they only get plus one at such a low fighting power of that shot. It's five, so they're five each. So they're on ten, plus two because they're outnumbering. So that's ten each. So that's twenty-two versus twenty-four. That's plus two. So they go into indecisive disorder. So there's a big kerfuffle going on there. And the um, um, Prussians are slightly getting the edge. If, so if that goes on unadjusted by any reinforcements on either side, that's that's it's, it's going to um, exponentially get worse for the Italians there. Oh, I beg your pardon. There was a German in there, and he would have added one for being German and one for being halted, which would have put us on. A net of zero, so in fact, we can, that's nothing. So yeah, even Stevens. Um, but over here we have eight, um, what range are we at? We're at long range for both, so that's eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen 12, 13 plus, um, 13 plus, 12 is 25 for the Prussians and they are telling us that's 4, 5, 6, it halted in disorder, so that's 3, 3 against, what did I say, 8, 20 something, so he's writing. Definitely, what battalion is that? That's the fifth, so he's going to lose four points. And he will route back.
back, you can probably get back that far towards his Hertwag headquarters there. And now I must, which I have, keep forgetting to do, is to do the friendly unit reactions to so see which of these fellows, how they respond to the routing and also on the, how these fellows around here respond to the routing and also of course for the Prussian ones. Upshot of the fellow unit reactions and no change for these fellows. Um, he's got, he's on three impulses, so he's still and he's surrounded by buddies. Um, this fellow retired back. I said he he didn't see it. This fellow routed to her, and that brought him routing and him retiring back. And then the uh, Jaegers here have also retired back on their supports. So on to the last band. So here I'm going to leave the sprawling battlefield of Clash of Empires. It's the uh, end of the third turn. So we have one more set of orders can go out. Um, and it's, it's going to be an indecisive battle. Uh, essentially, these fellows are going to manage to take the hill over here. And um, these fellows will be able to push up um, against the guns to stop the guns wheeling round to defend the hills. Whereas there's just going to be a ferocious melee with uh, this division here and um, the uh, crack Magyar brigade of Rosenwegs with some support from the Sloms cavalry. We did have a retreat back here. Um, that's going to be inclusive, conclusive melee. That's just going to be probably it will end up with slight pushing forward from um, the Prussians. Although I say that, but it really depends on the artillery because the artillery uh, that they have held the Prussians back so far. Essentially, the only reason these Prussians got further is because um, Jonak had sent out some brigades to try and st stop them. Otherwise, it would just be a rush, and uh, there being only two artillery units, the Prussians could maybe have advanced three abreast. So um, each each band, one unit would have been sent reeling back, um, and the middle ones could have carried on. But essentially, the whole line, um, say if they, they moved three abreast here, so two were broken, one went on, then the middle one went on, then the next uh, band... He would be targeted. So essentially the attack would have been broken up purely by the defensive artillery. The only hope is the um, uh, flanking manoeuvre on those artillery. And um, it does leave me with some questions about the system. I absolutely love the system for the way it reflects the, the kind of back and forth. You know, like these ones have been locked in combat with a little bit of back and forth for about three bounds now. And uh, finally, uh, the Prussians are managing to gain ascendancy on them by moving their artillery to fire on their flank. But it was toing and froing, depending on, um, like they, when they first moved up, they knocked a unit back, and then they carried on to the second unit who managed to hold them, but only just they gained ascendancy over him. But then the, the unit behind recovered, came back to support, and so then it evened out, and it so it would sort of stay evened out without any, any. Uh, uh, reinforcement on either side. I really like this ascendancy thing. So for example, the uh, Austrians here, they these fellows routed uh, leading a battalion there, they'll move into the second battalion. He's likely to reel back probably just in retreat rather than rout. Meanwhile, these are moving forward. So the Austrian will send these in, which will send that um, back. But then these fellows will be open for flank attacks and fire. They'll gradually get demolished and then providing the Prussian has a few reserves left, they can move in and take the hill. I think they do, they have a whole division here against the a, a brigade and the remnants of the brigade. I think the artillery are going to have to concentrate here, so I'm pretty sure the Austrians can take the hill. Um, and as I said, I think it's, it's just going to be a mess around here. The Prussians will keep pushing and the Austrians will be able to, will counterattack and keep them off with their artillery. So the town will be safe, but the hill is one objective. So, but um, another question I have is, uh, it's fairly typical with a lot of uh, kind of miniature style rules, is things aren't completely ironed down. 
and this is the third time I played this scenario and the Prussians have if I go strictly by the rules I think they will not ever win um, because to to claim your objective there can be no enemy within striking distance in the case of the Austrians that has to be within charge range so all the Austrians need to do is keep and it could just be one unit effectively in scallops here it's in charge range of that hill the Prussians will not be able to claim the hill as their objective and, and gain the victory so because the Austrians can kind of hold something back and the Prussians just don't have enough time they've got a restricted space to push to their objective and further on I don't think this scenario is actually winnable for them especially when we consider the power of the Austrian artillery to keep keep um the call back that is a decisive factor and that's so apart from some of the, the gray areas also in like um exactly how you retreat units you know if a unit is in this like if this unit is in this formation he retreats it says uh actually it does say retire keeps the information but retreat doesn't yes yeah, so he could presumably move around like that but it's just not completely locked down how units move around in retreat and route. But the main thing I sort of left with is is uh, after this battle is is about the artillery. Because the Prussians have to move up, and they don't have as long a range as the Austrians. Obviously, they move up as they're in Lumbian. The Austrians fire on their artillery. Their artillery is sent really back or take losses. As soon as they've taken losses, they cannot match the Austrian artillery. So they will keep taking losses. Um, so there's a, a no-win situation there for the Prussians. So the way we dealt with it here was to move other units um, to take hits from the artillery. So the Austrian artillery, so the Prussian artillery could move further forwards. But by then they'd already taken a few hits, so when they did actually start dueling with these, they still didn't have enough ascendancy over them, and so couldn't win it. So essentially, uh, the artillery duel was a distraction from the artillery taking out um, the main body. It enabled the main body of the Prussians to move up around here. But then as you can see, the Austrians, all they need to do is counterattack. So my question really is, and it's how do you attack um, artillery like that? And I think the answer is something like this, is, is you march in line with um, enough units behind that they cannot gain ascendancy over you. Now, if you have two units doing that, then one artillery will have to fire at one unit. They, their uh, maximum strength is 18. And these are on base 8, so 8... 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So, yeah, if they had, if if you essentially sent in a whole um, brigade like that, maybe first two in line like that, and the others are all 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, yeah, no, you don't need that. That's So five behind, one in front. So these are all supporting... Because if you if you do it this way, only this one will be within support range. This way, they can all count as being support range. So that, um, the artillery would not be able to have an effect against. So you could imagine two of those moving towards this artillery. But then, of course, the Austrians will send out fellows this way round. So something else will have to be done about that. It's very difficult with this narrow approach area. Um... That would have to be another day. I've got quite a busy weekend ahead and I'm going to have to leave this game now. I'm satisfied of what the conclusion will be. And uh, um, I'd like to give a review of this game, a bit more of an in-depth of the ins and outs of it at some point. But I think I'm going to have to take this down. And so I'll leave this here. But because I do have the other two games in the series, um, maybe once I play through them, I'll give a sort of overview as the series as a whole. Um, and my sense is, is that because the uh, expansion to this and the other two games in the series all include campaign games, whereby you're manoeuvring your forces on a map uh, divided into uh, rectangular uh, areas. Every time forces meet in a rectangular area, you lay them out on the map. 
I am thinking that part of the beauty of this system, uh, the uh, non-random warfare, the, the completely determinate um, combat system, is also part, part <coughs> of its loss in that you can then figure out matchups. You know, I can figure out, okay, this can always beat this, so it can move forwards with no uh, no result against it, barring outside forces. And that's what does make the combat system beautiful, is, is your ascendancy over your opponent depends on how you manoeuvre uh, and, and form up your forces against each other. But then once you've figured out the best match, there's, it looks like there's going to be a bit of a stalemate and you'll have, you can have, like there, it, you could have thought it was a bit silly in that they fought a couple of rounds without anything happening. No one lost anything, no one gained anything. So potentially that could go on all day, um, which, and you know, th that match up there could seem unsatisfactory. So I think the, the campaign kind type scenario um, it becomes a bit of a necessity in this because then you're going to have unequal forces, uh, you know, occurring. That's when you're going to have more interesting battles, the outcomes of, of those kind of things, which is, 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 well, again, it's kind of good and bad because, again, it reflects well, I think, um, the character of warfare, which is particularly uh, in the, the time of musket and, and onwards is its uh, manoeuvre is uh, extremely important it's not just uh, two lines clashing against each other but then on the other hand it could mean that you end up with very unbalanced and therefore unsatisfying combats uh, individual as you know series of individual combats like that until one person um Essentially, the, the victory always goes to the one with the, the ascendancy over the other, a superior force. And the most of the game then would actually occur in the manoeuvring on the very abstract campaign map rather than in the, the interesting uh, tactical battle system which the game provides. Anyway, we'll see what, um, you know, when that comes down the pipeline. Uh, my closer look at an overview of the system. I'm looking forward to the um, is Iron and Fire, which is the American Civil War version of this, um, based around Jackson's Shenandoah campaign battles. And then there is, uh, what's its name? I've forgotten what it's called, uh, but it's a Shock Army. Yes, the Spanish Civil War um, version. Total fighting power, iron and fire, and shock army to come later down the pipe.